Hi, supporting open well stairs. This is what we are going to discuss today. This is also a doubt posted by one of our students in the ETAPS learning community. I will explain you two practical examples of stairs and explain you the scheme for those. Hi all, this is Premjit here from civilera.com. Before getting into the topic, please ensure you are subscribed to our channel and then click the bell icon to get alerts on a regular basis. If you are not in my community, please join my telegram group and other community groups which I have given the links in the description. Also, please remember to share the video in case if you like this. Coming back to the topic, here is the question from the student and he asks, so structurally how to support the landing slabs for open well staircase and he has given a part plan of the staircase now first thing i would like to ask students who are posting doubts is that you need to scheme the entire floor and then give me so that i can relate the column positions and then tell you the scheme for the stair stair scheme is in relation with the entire building and it's not standalone so i need to know the column position so in the absence of columns here i'm going to take columns near to the stair so first thing that i would do is that to mark the flight so he has given the flight direction so let's stick with that so here you can see that the stair starts like this and then takes a turn and then comes and support here so i'm assuming that you have a column somewhere here so if this column is not available here it may be somewhere here it depends on the entire plan of the building so in that case you may need a beam connecting this so i'm not sure where the nearby column is so i'm going to assume that there is a column at that corner so if it's not available it will slightly change the plan or the scheme of the stair now second thing is that I am also going to assume that there is a column here or somewhere very near to that and here and here. Now with this I am going to explain you how to support this particular stair. Now there are various ways that you can do this. Say in case if I get a column here or provide a column, provide a column somewhere here and here and then it becomes quite quite simple because you will have a kind of plinth beam here where you are starting the stair so the first flight is going to be supported on this particular landing now your first flight is firmly supported between the plinth beam and the first landing so it will look like this so if you have a plinth beam you have the first flight and you have the landing and your first landing beam here so this is firmly supported as the first flight on two beams now when it comes to the second flight i will explain the second flight after i explain the third flight there is a reason for that so the third flight is also going to be very easily supported because you have a landing beam here and you have a floor beam at the upper level so on top of your plane beam at the same location at the top you will have a main beam as well if it's not possible here then it will extend up to here that's a different thing altogether but now i'm going to assume that you have a beam here now if due to any reason this beam is not available then you have to go and support that on this particular beam only that the stair span will become larger now i'm assuming that i have a beam right here so now in this particular case you have a mid landing or a second landing here so that will be something like you have the landing beam then you have the flight and your next beam where you are supporting your end of the third flight so third flight is also firmly supported like this as a stair between the landing beam and the floor beam here the first flight is supported between the plinth and your first landing beam now you are ending up with this portion of steps this is your second flight now don't consider this to be again spanning from somewhere here to here it's not like that because you have already supported your first flight as a one-way flight between this plinth and your this landing beam so this entire portion is already taken care and here also this entire portion is taken care as a second flight it's spanned between this beam and this beam so you don't have to worry about this landing anymore because it's spanning as a one way stair 
in this direction same is this case so now you are wanting to support one two three four five six and seven steps so half the load goes to this landing and half the load goes to the other landing so if you are doing this manually you have to distribute that load dead and live load from that seven steps equally onto your left and the right landing and that's the end of it you can design two flights by passing on this load onto the other and your seven steps are going to get suspended between that two landings so you won't need any further support it's getting supported onto the landings only that both landings the first and second landing needs to be designed for this load so this is option one now instead of doing this you can also give a column here in case due to some reason you are not getting a column there but you are getting a column here and here you can do the other way that is you support this as a single step stair and you give a plane beam here and a floor beam and you suspend these steps onto this landing and these steps into this landing so you will have the second flight as the main flight and the first flight getting suspended between the landing and your plane beam so half of these steps go to this and half of these goes to this you have to design it in that way so if you model this in your software then automatically all this load distribution do happen and you get your results but you don't have to model the stair and then design it in the software you can manually do it that's better in my opinion now the two methods i explained i would prefer the first one because here if you do this your span of the second flight is larger than doing the first method which i told you so the first scheme will be better than this that is providing the column over here than here now if you get here as well then you have too many columns that's also not needed it will become like more than needed again as i said it depends on the entire scheming of the building now another option that i can suggest is which might be the better option among all of these is that you can give a stringer beam that is you can give a beam along the profile of the stair that is along this i can also suggest you a third method which might be the best method here that is you can give a beam along the flight of the stair so i will give a beam here along the flight i will give a beam along the flight now sometimes you may also need it on either sides because the width is higher and it cannot cantilever like this so i would give one more beam along the flight one more beam here along the flight if you really need you can give one here as well so these are too many beams some of it you can avoid by proper load distribution but i will just draw the section and show you so if i draw this section you will have a beam of this profile that is you will have a beam in this profile so the depth and all that you have to decide based on your forces so here you have a column or a beam here also you have a column or a beam so this is getting into a column there and here also you have a column and you have a beam entering there so this will be the profile of that particular beam so you have two parallel beams here so if you are having two parallel beams like this you can span this as a one way one way one way way slab will be a one way slab onto these two parallel beams so that's the arrangement so this will be a plane beam and you have one beam here and one beam along the profile like this and you can span this one way as i said you can reduce the number of beams by suspending it between the landing slabs as i mentioned earlier so that call you can take but what basically i'm trying to convey is that you can have a beam of this profile and then simplify your stair scheming by reducing the number of columns you can also give it in the center of the flight but generally not done for larger stairs but still sometimes you can do that in case you need that it will be a stringer beam in the middle and you can support 
the stair as two overhanging equal cantilevers on either side of the stringer beam. So the stringer beam will be following the profile of the stair and then you will cantilever. But it depends on the spans and the cantilever dimensions and the type of the stair if it's concrete, steel and so on. So this is also an option but generally you can give two stringer beams and then support or the first method which I mentioned. Now the second question he had asked is a similar stair but a bit more longer second flight. So here too you can do a similar approach. So maybe if you can move this column to somewhere here and move this column to somewhere here that can be a bit better. It all depends again on the entire scheme of the building. So if you get something like this or you can even give the column here. It all depends. So here I can give a beam which is at the floor level and also at the plinth level there will be two beams. Now your first flight is properly supported here and now your third flight is supported here because you have a mid landing beam here and now you need to suspend your remaining steps into this landing and this landing. So this landing should take half the load of the second flight and this landing needs to take half the load of the second flight so that we also can do. Now in case you decide to give the column as it is. Now the only issue is that in case if you want to have a landing beam it will stray a little extra that is instead of stopping here it goes up to here. Instead of stopping here it goes up to this column. So that's the difference. Generally in residential structures you will not give that two stringer beam like this along the stair. It's generally given in commercial buildings or in institutional buildings like colleges so that it's okay even if that beam is visible there. So in residentials if you cannot give that you can adopt the scheme that I told just now. So your first flight is supported, your third flight is supported, your second flight is suspended between first and the third flight. Now sometimes maybe in this case if this span is a little larger then the thickness and the design of that particular flight can become challenging and many engineers might think of taking a cantilever from these columns so that you get an intermediate support to break the span of that particular stair. So in this case I don't suggest that because your column is oriented like this and if you take a cantilever out of this then to bend your beam bars your minor or the weaker axis of the column is subjected to a moment. So if you can design that column for that moment and if your rebars are 12 or 16 and you can bend it into that 200 column thickness then that's okay to give a free cantilever like that but you need to take care of that in your design. So if you want to avoid that cantilever you can do that by not giving that cantilever and then suspend the second flight between the first and the third flight. Now if the stair is of the type with only a cantilevering slab like this you can always do that by giving a stringer beam inside the wall tucked inside the wall and you can cantilever your steps from that beam. So this beam will be tucked inside your wall. So in this case your wall will have that beam but in this case you will have a opening here so that may not be really possible. It depends on that opening. Is it above the stair? Generally it will be. So in that case you can give it and the steps are cantilevered. So only steps will be there. It can be cantilevered as I have shown here. So if I draw the section you have the beam here and the step is cantilevered from that particular beam and this beam is inside your wall. So if your opening is like this even if it's a window or a door whatever if it's like this then you can do that your stringer beam is not clashing with your opening. To summarize there are more than one method for supporting these stairs. So it depends on the overall scheme of your project. The position of columns and beams and various things do decide the scheme for the stairs. So I have given you only tips for deciding how to support the fine tuning you have to do based on what you want. Some of the beams that I have shown can be reduced. You can have a different method than I explained also in lines with what I explained. But then 
these are some tips that you can use to design the scheme of your stair so it depends on your overall plan so that's all i wanted to convey in this video thank you so much for watching this video please like and share the video please also see the description and then join the groups and let's propagate structures thank you once more